Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I'm making, please click that subscribe button. Also remember to click that bell button and make sure to tick that box to send all notifications so you don't miss out on any videos. With that in mind, let's get on with the video. What's up guys, welcome to Munchkins Gaming where we take your gaming to the next level. This is Munchkins logging in to bring you another Final Fantasy XIV video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my impressions on the warrior job. Now it's been a while since I did a job impressions video and mainly due to the fact that I actually didn't want to power my way through. I wanted to level my warrior using the level roulette because I wanted to get those crack crystals. Now you can tell me you can do the, you can still get that if you're level 70, but uh, I want the fact that I'm actually leveling, getting something out of it and getting that extra little thing makes me feel much better. <laughs> when I'm actually just going there as a level 70 and not gaining any experience when I could be using it for another class. So uh, in on that note, I, I also want to say that the warrior job is probably my last job impressions video because I don't know how far I will be into actually leveling the rest of my classes because Basically, my next highest level job right now is Scholar and Summoner at level 51, I, 54 or 51, some, somewhere around there. And my Dark Knight Machinist, my Astrologian are all just level 30 something. And my Red Mage is actually level 50 something, I would say, or maybe just level 50 flat. So I don't know how long those jobs is going to take me. And I'm kind of burnt out in a way when it comes to leveling jobs so I'm not exactly sure when if you guys are actually wanting me to but on that note if you do want a couple more job impressions I can do some on monk and I can do some on samurai as well the reason why I haven't actually done a monk and samurai job impressions video is basically because I feel like I've done quite a lot of videos on those already and a lot of the people who actually watch those probably know how I feel about the job. Especially monk, I've made multiple videos on that from way down, way back in 4.0 where I actually was quite disappointed on it but I still really like it. So if you guys really want me to make another job impressions on that, basically just a full on job impressions, please leave down a comment below and I'll get to that if there's a lot of people actually asking for it. Now let's get on to the topic at hand while you're actually on this video. And that's basically the samurai, samurai, no, the warrior job. Uh, so I do find the warrior tank job to be the higher DPS tank job like it's always been. Uh, it did suffer a little bit on 4.0 when it first released because of the beast gauge debacle where it was cutting your beast gauge in half every time you switch a stance. So I never experienced that because I never leveled my warrior during 4.0. I started leveling it at least when they patch off that beast gauge problem and I never got to shake it off uh, up until 4.1 so I have no sort of experience on that as well and I have no experience back in 3.0 so if there are things that I do miss please let me know in the comments down below so um, I feel like the warrior has benefited a lot from the roll skills. It did lose its foresight, but who cares about foresight? It was a useless skill. Um, I guess it has its uses, 20% physical damage reduction, but a lot of things were magic based damage. So, but I think in 3.0, they sort of made much of the tank busters to be a physical anyway but that's just my uh, own impression on that uh, I could be totally wrong because I never really played a, a tank job in 3.0 but I do remember in T um, T11 or something uh, or T10 the two-headed beast that, that you have to provoke and that was a 
that was back in 2.0 but yeah that was a physical attack uh, foresight had its uses but now it's changed into rampart so rampart is actually a better better skill it used to be a paladin only skill but now th that the warrior has access to it and so is convalescence uh, warrior always had um convalescence but uh the rampart and convalescence combo actually benefits the warrior a lot uh, especially now in 4.1 so uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the skills that I find now some of these might might be from 3.0 skills but I like I said I never really played a warrior back in 3.0 uh, and I'll tell you my impressions of them so I find that the warrior right now has a lot more cooldowns than the paladin I always felt and I always you know understood that the paladin actually had the most mitigations out of all the tank classes and this was sort of sacrificed for its dps it had more mitigation that means you know um it'll have less dps but now i feel like warrior actually has more so for a one-on-one -on -one com comparison rampart both of them have Sentinel is like Vengeance, although Vengeance is, I think, a little bit less mitigation, but it does have a physical reflect damage, which is extra DPS. So, um, Raw Intuition is like Bulwark, but Bulwark is obviously better because of the blocking is 25%, whereas Parry is only 20%. Plus, I feel Raw Intuition is like a double-edged sword. Um, it's really good when you're just facing something, but if you're trying to dodge something and you turn your back or turn to the side, you're gonna get hit by a lot of critical hits, especially if you pull a lot of mobs. What I do with um, Raw Intuition is actually sacrifice it for Shake It Off, to be honest, because um, you get that extra, basically, extra mitigation from Shake It Off when you're sacrificing some of your cooldowns. Now, the other one is, obviously they both have Convalescence, and Thrill of War is another extra one for the uh, Warrior, whereas Paladin doesn't have any. I guess it has Clemency, that's the conversion for that, uh, in a way, but, you know, Warrior has Equilibrium as well, which is like a self-heal, and it can be a TP thing as well if you need it, so... Um, I feel that was the equivalent of clemency. So, and finally, since they change what Shake It Off, what Shake It Off is or what it does, it's like Divine Veil basically. So, eight percent, flat out eight percent, and then if you can sacrifice some of your cooldowns, it's an extra four percent for each one. But it's very specific to the warrior cooldowns. So. Um, Rampart, you're not going to be sacrificing Rampart for that. So, and Convalescence, they don't work. Raw Intuition, uh, and a bit, I believe Inner Beast, which I haven't even talked about yet. Um, Thrill of War and Vengeance are the four cooldowns that you can use to actually benefit Shake It Off. So, now talking about um, Inner Beast. So, this is another uh, mitigation that the Warrior has. And listing all of this it feels like the paladin actually got the short end of the stick here um granted the paladin has more skills now it's very like bulky there's so much skills for a paladin but it feels like some of them aren't really that useful in a way i guess um having passage you know wings for a paladin is another good mitigation which not a lot of people actually use and i'm sort of in like that but you know i don't know what to compare it with in terms of uh the skillful warrior now i'm not saying that the paladin is completely useless it, of course it's not it actually is pretty good um it's a pretty good uh job but the warrior has m sort of more cooldowns 
that a paladin intervention is actually a support skill so it's not like the paladin as actually getting something from that what they've added more for the paladin is more dps in a way thanks to holy spirit and passage of arms like i said it's another mitigation but you're sacrificing dps for passage of arms and it's usually used for um i guess not tank busters but more so raid wide aoe damage that you know is uh, gonna be hard to mitigate for the healers so and so i feel like the warrior has a lot more access to cooldowns and it will never run out of access to cooldowns let's just say you pop everything for both uh for both jobs while paladin won't have anything to offer except for sheltron of course that's uh one of the things uh, is a 25% sure thing damage but inner beast lasts for 6 seconds so if a tank buster happens and you know for some reason it crits and you get auto attack sheltron is not going to be able to save you in a way but inner beast might so it's just a little bit of a toss up uh, I do feel like the inner beast is better because of the flat 20% mitigation plus you can parry as well uh, although that is up to chance so I'm not saying like I said I'm not saying the paladin is completely useless but just comparing them I felt like the warrior had a little bit more and um, looking at paladin it's still in a good place I really really like paladin as a tank but when it comes to like raw DPS and mitigations, I feel like the warrior has a little bit more. Maybe it's, that's that's just me. Maybe it's different for you. Um, but I feel like the inner beast, I like it very much. And you know, you can before it runs out. If you have shake it off, you you can have extra extra more mitigation right there. But uh, obviously, you have to time that right. Uh, and I wouldn't really be using shake it off all the time because I feel like it's a, it is a divine veil sort of skill so you know that's just me so uh, what else can I say about the warrior in terms of the skill I think I've covered much of the skills in the comparisons and of course the paladin has hollow ground home gang as <laughs> good as it is uh, because of the amount of times you can use it a hollow ground that 10 seconds of no taking damage is just a breather for your healers unlike home gang <laughs> you will drop to one hp they do have to heal you back up if you if home gang runs out and you're not healed back up it's over so um there is that too and i guess it's time for my final impressions on the warrior jobs after everything i said I feel the warrior has had its ups and downs, uh, it had its ups in 2.0, obviously it wasn't as uh, a mitigation master as the paladin was in 2.0, and in 3.0 it actually received deliverance which is a flat out DPS increase, which is, uh, I don't know if actually the deliverance had that 5% extra DPS, but um, now in 4.1 because of the extra changes that they made from 4.0 it actually benefited a lot from that beast gauge debacle it benefited from shake it off being changed to like a divine veil sort of skill and deliverance giving him an extra dps so if you like tanking and dpsing at the same time the warrior job is probably the job for you uh, it has a very good amount of mitigation so you'll never run out of mitigation as long as you have it 50 beast gauge which is the equivalent equivalent of sheltron and, and um, paladin sheltron might be good if you can time it at the right tank busters but inner beast has that six six seconds of time where you won't have any so i do think the warrior job is a very good job to play especially if you're tanking if you like tanking and dpsing at the same time 
Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Remember to click like, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful at all. As always, I'd like to hear from you guys what you think of the warrior job. And if you have anything that I miss, please leave them down in the comments below. As always, you can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook at Munchkins Gaming. This is Munchkins, logging off, and I'll see you guys in the next level.